This is one of a series of 12 introductory videos on teaching in a digital age based on my book of the same name. Uh, I'd like to thank the Commonwealth of Learning for their, their help in facilitating these videos. Um, I'm going to talk to, in this video about modes of delivery, uh, in particular based on chapter 10 in my book. Chapter 10 um, on modes of delivery uh, looks at uh, the difference, different ways in which we can actually deliver um, courses. The aim of the 12 videos are to provide a brief introduction to the main themes in the book, which is a free online textbook available from the, uh, the, the URL on, on the screen. Um, and I'd like to thank also BC Campus um, in British Columbia, Canada, who uh, host the book and made the book possible through their open textbook project. Uh, this video is specifically on modes of delivery based on chapter 10. There are now multiple modes of delivering courses. At one time, there was a strict division between campus-based teaching, face-to-face -face teaching, and fully online learning. They were two completely separate forms of uh, delivering education. Um, but now we're seeing over the last 15 to 20 years, um, as more people have got experience of teaching fully online, uh, instructors have started integrating online components into their classroom teaching. So we now have a continuum of um, delivery. At one end we have face-to-face, -face, still with no technology, although to be honest, books are a form of technology. So, um, But then we have classroom aids, um, like PowerPoint slides and so on. And then we get into the middle here, we get um, maybe video recorded lectures, uh, which students watch at home and come into class for discussion. Or we have what I call hybrid learning, and I'll explain that in a bit more de detail. But you can see that you can have any kind of mix of online and face-to-face -face here. There are in fact many forms of blended learning. Uh, I've already mentioned technically technology enhanced learning where you have PowerPoint or clickers and so on. Um, and they can be quite sophisticated. This is a high-tech uh, team-based uh, learning classroom at Queen's University in, uh, in Ontario. And you'll see that there's a pod in the center of the room, uh, rather like Captain Kirk in Star Trek, where the, where the, where the instructor um, uh, operates from. And then around the room, there are tables of students uh, where students can plug in their computers. Uh, there's screens associated with each computer. And you can have everything on, on all the screens or can have each screen just located with the, with the table. And there's even little breakout rooms where individual students can go do a little bit of work and come back and join the group. Um, the second kind of blended learning is uh, regular lectures, um, but also using a learning management system or a virtual learning environment, piece of computer software, uh, that supports the face-to-face -face teaching where faculty can put their PowerPoint slides and extra work for students and so on. Then the third is what I mentioned before, a flipped classroom where a video is, of a lecture is recorded, then there's a face-to-face -face discussion afterwards. The fourth is um, what I call the Royal Roads model. Um, this is one semester on campus and then two online. This is a master's program aimed primarily at lifelong learners. The semester is often in the summer, for instance, but the two, on, two other semesters are fully online. And then there is the most interesting one, which I'll say a bit more about. Um, that's a hybrid mode where you actually reduce but don't eliminate the amount of face-to-face -face teaching and the rest is done online. And here you make a deliberate decision about what's best done online and what's best done face-to-face. -face. So that's built into the design of the course. 
And there are all kinds of other ways of blending online and face-to-face -face teaching. Um, the issue is, how do you decide what to do? And the book goes into more detail on this. Now, in brief, what this means is not so much looking at what online learning can do, but what are the specific affordances or the uh, advantages of face-to-face -face teaching over online? Now, the default position for many instructors is that face-to-face -face must be the best way because we've always done it that way. But the research shows actually that it, there's no difference when you look at enough studies. What the research shows is that it's the conditions that matter. You can do face-to-face -face teaching very well or you can do it very badly. And similarly, you can do online learning very well or you can do it badly. So under different conditions, um, each of those can work very well. So I suggest in the book that the best way to approach this is the law of equal substitution. Everything can be taught as well online as face to face, except, and then we look at the exceptions rather than the general rule. And so I throw out the challenge in the book, why do students need to get on the bus to come to campus? This is from the University of British Columbia in Canada. This is the bus terminal at the university. Now, when students can do more and more learning online, we have to have a better justification for them coming to campus. And I think we need to think as much about the affordances of the campus as we do about the disadvantages of online learning. So in making that choice of what should be face to face and what should be online, I suggest four criteria in the book. And I won't go in detail through these in the video, they're in the book. But the four criteria are, and the primary one, in my view, is your students. What kind of students have you got? Are you teaching first year students or are you teaching graduate students? Are most of your students lifelong learners or are they straight out of university? And the more experienced the student, the more equipped they are to study online. Um, but I'm also suggesting that you can introduce students gradually through blended learning to online learning so that they become more independent learners as they move through a university program. And I'm also suggesting that it, it might, given the diversity of students, that we often have mixed groups of students in our classes. We might have some young students, we might have some lifelong learners. Could we design courses so that it could be delivered in any mix that the students would prefer? The second criteria is identifying your teaching approach and what are the necessary learner activities in order to re achieve the learning objectives of the course? And I, I'll give these examples in more detail in the book, but on the right hand side here, you can see I've taken a science uh, course and broken down uh, a unit of teaching as to what is best done face to face and what is best done online. One of the things that's apparent from this is that there are no general rules. You have to look at every course and every context differently. The third is what resources do you have available? Do you have access to an online high speed uh, micron microscope? Um, that would be make it very difficult, different than if students have to go into the campus to sit to use a microscope, for instance. And then you have to analyze the most appropriate mode for each learner activity within that context. So that's a very quick introduction to um, looking at what are the differences between face to face and online learning. There's much more about this in the book. Um, there's the information about how to uh, access the book. And the next video will be about implementing online learning. So thank you for um, paying attention for this short video and I look forward to you seeing you in the next one.